Yeah, well, enjoy it, but also don't blow yourself out, Black Wolf. I mean, if you end up getting tired or whatever, go to bed. If you gotta go to bed, go to bed. You know I appreciate you being here, uh, but I, I don't want I don't want it to be at the cost of your health. I start campaigns off at level one, um, but it but levels one through three usually don't last that long. I even started off a campaign at level zero. It was uh, Kid Adventures. <clears throat> All right, so we made our region. We discussed some reasons for there being a haunted hill. Uh, and, uh, and so we could modify the map a little bit, go back and if you want to go with the spiders or the shipwreck, or there's a lot of different ways to go about that. Uh, now what I'd like to do is explore, uh, I want to explore the city, and a good way of doing that, well, first things first, let's, we're going to make a new, um, we're, we're going to make a new map, so here is a fantasy city generator, free to use, you're welcome to use it. And there are ways that we can uh, have it randomly generate a map for us, if we wish to do so. And, I mean, here's... Alright, I don't need to worry about the overworld. Plus, for some reason, it's, it's making my computer chug. Um, anyway, if you go to that site, we can make different types of cities. Why is my mouse disappearing also? Let's refresh things. All right, so here, small city, a little bit of water, and there are ways that... If you didn't want to sit down and plan a city, uh, a, an engine like this is going to be great for it. And there are some other city uh, builders that you can find. Uh, there should be one on Donjon, D-O-N-J-O-N as well. And we can make a large city. Ah. And from here, we can uh, we can turn a lot of other things off or on. So for the style, uh, there's uh, we can add and subtract some coloration. We can make some thin lines if we don't like everything being um, separated like that. We can have our towers made as bastions, square towers or round towers. Our buildings, block simple complex buildings water nice simplified or it's something that is uh, you know a little bit more curvy we can add or subtract farm fields elevation and you see how the buildings change because of that we can also uh, we can also uh, play around with um, I wonder if uh, <laughs> we can even add more roads uh, coast shanty town walls temple plaza it, it, it's doing it's doing all of this for us here <clears throat> Now, the map that we're going to make, I, we're just going to make it in paint, but we can use something like this as an example. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it, and uh, but that uh, if it needs a, if it needs a better story, well, 
you know, if you're still having fun playing it, and you also got to play with the broadcaster, that's really cool. <clears throat> All right, so here's the here's the area that we made, and we can come back and reference it. In fact, here, I'm going to keep this open, and then I'm going to keep this clickable off to the side. Twelve-sided guy rolls in and displays it, too. Well, hopefully that's what you're hoping to get. Unless... Unless you're randomly rolling for your class, in which case a two is a bard, and um, uh, Clay Pigeons doesn't want to play another bard. Here now, we can take the image of our, of our city proper, and we can really focus on this. So we'll make a, let's see, off to the sides, we're going to make the little cliff carve-outs. Hmm. Something like that. I'll have to recolor. And then we had something kind of like this. As the city was going around this little uh, spur of rock. So maybe in that case, it won't come up as far. That'll end up curving back this way. And going back out. And that's this little bit here before that continues out to sea. <clears throat> so therefore, on the other side, this is actually going to be more like... Let's erase that, since we have a bit of a guide stone now. So that bit of rock is coming in this way. And then we have just a little bit that's kind of poking up like so. Maybe that could be raised up, but still, we'll work with uh, we'll work with what we have. We have our beach that's kind of extending out this way. So we'll fill that in. Our beach on our other side is just kind of going between the two. But honestly, it's, it's further down. It's about here. And so that's going to end up going off the map a little ways. That will let us now start to fill in some of our colors. And that is going to leave all of this is going to be the majority of this city-state that we're developing. Zinthian, hey, I just came from a YouTube video of yours from 2018. Would you mind sharing the character randomizer you used? Um, hello, Zinthian. So the character randomizer that we're currently using in this year, um, this is one that uh, is not open. 
However, you can find the precursor to this that you saw in that video if you join our Discord. And it is located in a pinned message on our table talk, which is our general chat. And so you'd be able to download the spreadsheet that we use that was the basis for this prettier looking one. Uh, coffee, thank you for putting the link up. And yeah, Zinthian, if, if you need help finding it, uh, Coffee or another mod or a mentor can help you. Oh yeah, please post that uh, post that picture up uh, of Mouse and uh, Black Wolf. I see that you you posted a picture of your Dauntless character as well. <coughs> Pardon. Less than a week till payday, then I get to annoy Maddie with adoptions. Oh, the torture, the horror. <laughs> You know I generally do appreciate the fact that you do adopt uh, minis, Wolfie. Thank you very much. All right, so we indicated that there's probably some kind of a canal uh, that's coming up. And so we'll make this flowing kind of through the, the middle of the city here until it reaches uh, until it reaches a reservoir. And let's make a nice reservoir, shall we? Now I'm primarily drawing the major features of the city. Um, this doesn't mean that only the buildings that we make are just the ones that are there. But enough so we get an idea of the presentation in something that's as quick as MS, you know, kind of a quick and dirty thing in MS Paint here. Whoops. Aha. I found the breach. You put too much time into them. And so it's a good problem to have. It really is. Um, um, but that's why I do advocate for going simple with something like MS Paint. Uh, you could go back to this. You can go back to this um, to this Fantasy City generator. And oh, yeah, look, and everything's labeled and all this. And your players are going to look at this map and their eyes are just going to cross and go, I, what? what? What am I looking at? Uh, this, this doesn't really make sense. What's, what's happening here? Um, okay, so the merchants are there, so I guess we'll, we'll go to sector three. Um, now, some of this stuff are options, you know, these are things that, uh, I don't know why, uh... Ah, there we go, because we turned off random. So we can, uh, we can turn off all sorts of, uh, annotations and everything, and have something simple... Um, or go complex, but if you're presenting things like this, or especially if you hand your characters this, it the eye is drawn to the areas, and they say, "Oh, the farmland surrounding the surrounding, uh, surrounding kind of the the muck swamp." Or okay, so I get it that the city straddles uh, two sea level areas, and then rises up onto the cliff and has a bunch of cliffside dwellings. Also, got it. Bunch of towers. Got it. Because we can get super detailed. I, I could whip this up in uh, Wonder Draft and, and put in a t like individual, uh, individual stuff. But, you know, there is a point where... Mm, eh, <laughs> it, is it really worth it? Is the juice worth the squeeze? So we have this central... Uh, Every time I look at the map, I think it's a brain with tentacles. Ah, so it's a it's a grell, not so much a flump. Too much detail can be a bad thing. Victor, you're gonna lurk already.
A boop? Why am I being booped? Shukan's back for an hour. I'm hoping that by doing the single pull, I'll get you more income with the three little adoptions. That's, uh, Wolfie, that's part of the strategy, at least I hope, is that the single pull covers the, like, my absolute, like, the, the cost of shipping in the box. And then over time, at some point in time, the other three figures will sell, and that would be where the money is actually raised for the channel. If Maddie needs cash, I can send him some. Uh, uh, Shukan, if, if you ever want to adopt minis, you know that you can. Um, but I, I don't, I, I'm not in a point where I'm going to be like, Shukan, I need you, man. My, my cats aren't going to get fed if you don't adopt some minis. Feel that simplicity is more for battle maps and areas rather than story. Hmm. And, you know, nothing nothing can stop you from making, you know, if you want to make a, a nice water deep style, every building is present. I mean, it may not be detailed, but you can do that. It, it just, you can, you can get lost easily. A city should feel daunting and complex. And, yeah, and there's different ways. Hopefully by the time that we finish this map, uh, we'll have simulated that in, in some, in a meaningful fashion. So the water flows down. Now from here, you know, we didn't indicate on the broad map, but this water, uh, this water reserve could uh, also then uh, flow through the city. And we did talk about that there were temples on both sides that were also desalinating the water, and that water was also uh, was also accruing. Um, so in some way, we could even have this be multi-level where this is acting like a it's, it's a little reservoir for some of the water that's being brought in from the main library the nature faith library but this could also have water be uh, pumping up to it from the sea level from the, the sea level temples that are here whoops sorry this is off screen from the sea level temples that are on both sides because the city rises up up a, a seaside cliff And so through water pressure, magic, mechanics, or something, um, we can have this area. This could even be a grand fountain in the middle of town that has water you know, pushing up and also flowing into it. And the water uh, can also flow throughout the rest of the city uh, in other ways, too. So something that we can put as a... kind of a landmark... We are going to have one of our uh, one of our temples be here, and it'll actually go out to sea a little bit because that that'll make sense for the intake, and that will make sense for um, uh, for any sort of rituals regarding nature and the sea um it could also act as a, a a point where you know devout sailors can sail up to the temple if they wish to as well and so we're going to put another one over here right now i'm just worried about the landmarks we'll uh, we'll get the roads like the roads are going to are going to flow where they do <laughs> for sure we are going to have an area uh, that we can just call, you know, the docks or the piers. And we can we can use some coloration. You know, if, if we're working off of everything here is is developed in some form or fashion. Uh, we can we can say that our docks are we'll use gray. Docks and warehouses are probably going to go up to about this point in between the two spurs of rock. And over here, it's going to travel 
just more along the beach in this area. And of course, we will have, um, you know, we'll have uh, piers and docks and such that are going to go out into the water. And for right now, I mean, does it matter that we list the exact amount? Not for what we're doing, but for reference sake, we know that we have some, we know that we have some dockage. One of the ports might even be for, you know, like super big vessels, and the other one might just have a, a marina for uh, smaller uh, for smaller vessels. You know, like little personal sailing craft, or you know, just little faster, um, some faster ones. So you might actually have a bunch more docks along here than just the big piers that are meant for the huge cargo ships on the other side. Now, as we continue to play SimCity, and we use our reference guide, as we come up to a more park area that has been restored, there's lots of grasses. Um, it's the highest point, so you can look out over the sea, and you can also look back out over the desert, including kind of the breadbasket area that's actually formed out of the wastewater canals. So here, besides the library, which is probably the highest point, this is going to be more of, um, you know, a, a better to do area on the surface. You're elevated. You don't have to worry about the smells as much. You can see off, you know, to, to all sides. And even if you have to look up and you can't necessarily see the sea, you can see the, the groves of trees. And of course, you get this view of this big library that's far to the south. <clears throat> It's probably going to ride up more along this side. Uh, at least, because, again, the scaling from this map to what I'm drawing, it's different. We're just doing a, a quick rendition. If I wanted to blow this up and actually, like, put details on this map, I could. Um, but here are our concepts if we're building a city. So here's the here's a more of an industrial area. If this is for big ships, this probably uh, isn't going to be as heavily... Um, maybe not as heavily criminalized, right? It's not... It's not a bunch of docks going out there with just anyone who has a rowboat. Uh, we're talking, you know, big merchants or there is money here. And so we can have the, the wealthy district, actually, uh, can probably even uh, ride, like, overlap a little bit here. Boom. And then this part of town can continue with the more the upper end. No, this would... If we're talking kind of the center of town here, you know, there's probably going to be a park and whatever, and we'll place that there. So we'll say that the, the nice higher class residential stuff is more along the cliff side here. <clears throat> then what that will mean because they can look down uh, over the other areas uh, and of course with the elevation you know the nicer stuff comes down and and this might be a, the private marina for people who have uh, private vessels so all the big boats can stay off to the side but then there's plenty of space for the nicer the yachts and such <clears throat> Now we're getting into a kind of a commercial buffer area. And we'll have, following this fresh water, kind of a marketplace.
that comes up. This is probably the heavier market because it's also accessible if people come up this way. What you're going to find more along here, and by the way, if any of you played SimCity, and hopefully some of this is making sense, we're going to find more of a um, very specialty shops, very well organized, um, you know, premier bakeries and the like. And these nice, nice stores are going to act as a bit of a buffer. Are traveling entertainers a big thing in the world? Could have an open area for that kind of thing? Yes. Yeah, so we can put in an amphitheater and some other public works. Exactly. <clears throat> Playing some city to make a D&D &D map sounds fun. Yep, so if you all have suggestions, as long as I remember to keep looking over at chat, geez. You'd think I haven't broadcast before. Yes, a tent city. Um, so that would be more of um, kind of an outskirts. Again, for how I drew the map here, I mean, we could just go and erase this if we really wanted to. This isn't even going to cover all of all of the city. This is more just the core, like right here is what this is getting, the central part. Yep, some, some kind of a plaza. So we have a lot of commercial activity that's happening here. I, I think that a plaza would be good if we make it accessible, if we have a west-east kind of road traveling this way, then an open plaza Let's see. We'll place a plaza by the Grand Fountain here. For this side, if these docks here are going to be more for, you know, a lot of the, the it's, it's like the, the lower cost docking, not the big freighters or anything along those lines. We're definitely getting a lot of warehouse stuff. Not that you can't have warehouses here, but those are probably actually going to be tucked up, uh, up on the, maybe on the cliff over here. Um, or actually the warehouses are probably going to be more central because you want to easily move things. Um, but on this side, we can end up having kind of a warehouse district. That's buffering the docks. Not necessarily industrial. But it's definitely a busy place. There could be some, you know, commercial activity, a, a, a fish warehouse, that kind of a thing. But we're talking more of um, things that would be just storage. You know, great big warehouses. Probably an area where you're going to get a lot more ne'er-do-wells or gangs or, um, you know, more of that, that not-as-vibrant vibe. That, of course, you know, the rich people could look down upon the unwashed masses down below on the beach here. Just thinking stuff like circus groups, because they usually come and set up their own tents. Yeah, yeah, recreational fields. So stuff like that, um, stuff like that can certainly exist, and that's that would probably be uh, recreational fields and the like are going to be not on the map that we're we're quickly genning up here, uh, but would be out in this more uh, verdant area that has been developed because of this kind of terraforming that the nature domain faith that rules this area. Has, uh, has started to have this, like, desert reclamation process. <clears throat> so now from here, we're getting into more of the... You know, the, the people, the, the managers, we're, we're talking, well, on this side, we're probably talking more uh, what you consider to be middle class. 
Now, I, I don't know. I, I don't like that word personally. Um, I, I just, I don't like classifying people in that fashion. Uh, to make a point, I'll say it, but I don't like calling people middle class or upper class or the like. It just doesn't sit well with me. All right, so now we're getting more into, now we're getting more on the cliff side here, um, more of uh, the middle class. And if you want to go upper middle, you know, whatever, that's that's fine. Um, we all we all do our thing. And they're gonna live next to the commercial area, and um, you know, close enough. They're they're probably blocks away from the fountain. Um, and no one's going to get a view of it for the marketplace and, and the things that exist here. But they're close to the market. You know, they can. some of them up, up close are paying for a nicer view. And we're probably also going to have uh, more, uh, more of these sort of blocks. Um, around this area. Over here, if we're talking a lot of longshoremen jobs, cargo hauling, fish cleaning, uh, maybe industrial stuff like boat repair, you know, blue collar work. Um, this is this is where we're going to be getting a lot more, especially at this shore level. We're going to be getting a lot more of the lower uh, the lower class housing, the blue collar working uh, areas. Things like row houses. So, I mean, th there is this plaza that you know, even the, those with lower incomes, they can uh, they can stop by and they can uh, partake in festivities in the plaza they can continue to walk uh they can continue to walk uphill right so it is an effort if they want to get to the fountain but the plaza is going to be a little bit more central at an elevation uh as an up down elevation and as a middle area for the different uh, parts of the city here we have a leak security has been compromised everyone there we go And honestly, this may well continue out to this side, right? It's kind of further away from the uh, from the agriculture, and so we just have our, our lower income housing here. Or if if, we, if our city, you know, if our, our city fathers here suspect that, you know, there could be problems, a lot of fights are going on, we could even have something like a garrison of, of police or guards, or if we're if we're considering having a city state then uh, we can have a, um, like, a, a city militia. Because often uh, those in the city militia are brought up from... Um, uh, those in the city militia are often brought up from, uh, you know, lower circumstances. They're going up because they want to try and afford stuff for themselves.
Pretty petty folks, yes. Uh, work was a beast today, says Fallon. Why do people insist on sitting on the patio when we have a perfectly good air conditioner? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, I, I can understand that. Uh, but, you know, if it was a good day, you know, some people want to air out. Or uh, at least here in Ohio, uh, something uh, a bill was recently passed in the state that um, restaurants can allow people with pets to sit on a patio. So there's that too. Someone's out walking walking their dog and they want to just sit down and have a beer or order a burger or something. You have lots of stuff you need to do in the next two, three days. All right, be well, Bubonic. Thanks for hanging out with us. Tamaric in ancient Rome and medieval times, it was common to have one's house or sleeping area above a shop where one worked. Yes. Yep. I mean, you, you see that. I mean, heck. I can go to downtown here, and, and you see that uh, quite often. So I, I don't want to imply that it's only commercial or it's only residential. Because you can imagine that even in the residential areas, people are sewing out of their homes or making preserves or uh, things like that. What I want to do with this, with this kind of thought experiment is how would, how would the city lay out? How would it be built? If I was to, if I were to show my players a map of the city, and generally we could apply, you know, where are the artisans? You know, wh where are the blacksmiths? Where would they generally be found? Probably where the big ore freighters are coming in and out. <clears throat> and you know what, too, when it comes to adventuring. This may sound trope, and hey, it's a trope for a reason. Let's say that this is the haunted hill. And it's haunted because phase spiders are infesting it. It's haunted because all those, you know, thousands of sailors disappeared into the hill. And you know where they're going to hit first? Where people might not notice that others are going missing right away? They're going to strike where there's more homeless. They're going to strike where there's more people who aren't as cared about as deeply as others. And that's where the mystery begins. And that's where, you know, the adventure could lead to. To now, all of a sudden, you're going through, you know, the, the slums and the docks. And you might find this evidence of undead or phase spiders or who knows or what else. And there and now your adventuring party is are the ones that are endearing themselves to the people and don't forget we have Cassiella who is a folk hero right she is a, a hero to the people we have Mara Marashino she works in a criminal network where you're... Pr I mean, not that criminals can't be the, the muckety-mucks, the, the higher-ups. She also works with the people. And who are the people? Even in a hierarchical setting. The people are the people. They call me peoples because I'm a man of the peoples. Right? We have two people who work in a criminal network. We have one person who's obsessed with wealth. And you know where uh, you know where you're finding this? The people, the wealth. And you know that the in, in, well, I mean we've discussed it, there are tunnels and such that go through the cliffside that provide uh, secretive and somewhat easy access back and forth. Religion is a big part of the city. We have uh, we have two people who um, we have, uh, two clerics. And technically there's an NPC, but the NPC is actually a PC, how it worked out. And so, faith is a big part of the city. We have two desalination nature temples on the shore. One is serving the people. There's another one here. The big library... Uh, you know, is is up on the peninsula or not? Uh, yeah, I guess the peninsula here. 
And in some way, the plaza may even have a central, like a cathedral. Or it's located uh, between the plaza and the fountain. Because uh, if, we're, if we're playing SimCity, we can go down into our sewer layer because we got to put down... We got to put down water pipes, right? Uh, water must flow and as must waste. Otherwise, we're going to all die of, uh, of uh, disease. We're also going to be using these temples as uh, sort of pump stations that is going to continue to pump the wastewater down and out into the desert to collect in this, uh, in this kidney of sorts in the desert to produce organic muck for farming and for more terraforming. <clears throat> and you're probably going to find a lot more, if not tent cities. I, I know, Zuler Pie, you're talking about that. And they could be tent cities. I mean, if there are nomads in the desert, they're probably not going to want to go into the city proper here, but establish on the outside. And, you know, who may want to live next to, you know, these more gray water... Uh, they're not aqueducts per se, but these more gray water canals that are flowing out of the city. You know, people who don't want to live there uh, and, are, and are setting up their squatting or it's a tent city or people who do own land there and it's, you know, it's cheap. So the, the poor are going to be more on the fringes of the city. In the interior, where it's safer, you're higher up, you have better views. You have access to safety. You have access to fresh water. That is where we're kind of getting the heart of the city here with the mix. Because, I, again, I, I drew it kind of derpy. Like, this area here is this area here. So, I didn't, I, I didn't do a very faithful job at, at scaling things. But that's fine because I still uh, we can still play around with the ideas about where things would be located. Co yes, cholera is in fact a, a very bad way to go. In ancient Rome, pipes were made of lead. What could the piping be made of in a typical fantasy world? Hopefully something a little safer, but they might not even know the hazards. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, um... It, it would depend. I mean, because lead is, is... I mean, if you think about it, besides it being toxic, lead is amazing, right? It's abundant. It's very easy to melt into shape. Um, you know, you could do a lot with it. Um, but, of course, you know, we didn't know at the time it was as toxic in the, the, the way that it was. I mean, they're even making artificial sweetener out of lead. And it was, uh, and it was uh, put into wine because wines were more bitter back then. Rodonis, um... Uh, Brodonis, you're, I mean, you'll have to talk to her and say that she can play a character of her own creation. Right? It's a game of imagination. And so she can be what she wants to be. Um, so, you know, we can... Uh, we, we can talk that, you know, is lead abundant here? And if not, is it imported? Or have they found another substance? If we're talking magic in D&D, &D, magic is often blocked by lead, and often by a thin sheet of lead. If the water... Um, if the water is a product of divine magic, then the lead may not be preferred, because what if something happens and the water needs treated by the clerics? In this case... What other metal or substance could they end up using? Yeah, if she wants to, if she wants to play a dwarf with a beard, that's all you got to that's all you got to do is say that you want to play that character. Oh, so like how to make a and d, d character from the ground up? Uh that's it's not too difficult to do, uh, Brodonis. Um, you know, it, it really... It, it, it comes to the concept of... Um, you know, what type of a character does she want to play? And not just, you know, you said that she wants to play a sexy dwarf. Even with a beard, that's fine. Um, 
because you know, th these are cosmetic things to add to your character. What does she see herself role playing as? Uh, what is what is the compelling nature to the character? Is she, you know, is her character from a noble family, and is trying to escape to get out and see the world that her family's hidden from her? Uh, is she a soldier that uh, you know she could have done anything else in in the world? Uh, but she decided to join the army out of a, a you know a sense of patriotism. Um, does your does your uh, or does her dwarf character um, has she just sort of uh, secluded herself in a library to become um, a sage and just studies books? I and mean, she could still play the hot nerdy dwarf. And that's fine. Uh, but what is compelling her in the world in which this story will take place? What does she do? What's her job? You know, what are her skills? Or even more broadly, does she have a favorite type of character? You know, does she read comics and she and she loves, uh, she loves uh, like Silver Surfer and other sort of cosmic beings. You know, they can fly around, they can manipulate matter. Um, you know, they seem to be very intelligent and, and otherworldly. Does she really have a thing for like Conan the Barbarian? you know, in, in comics or in, you know, in manga or something, does she go for one punch man? Cause he's so strong. Uh, or in the movies, does she really like uh, horror as a genre? Not even a character. Does she really like horror movies? And so she wants her dwarf character to be the, you know, the survivor of a monster attack or even be a monster hunter herself. Yes, exactly. Uh, Brodonis, do you have a player's handbook available? Oh, Brodonis, um, for sure. You can play D and D as a couple. There's, uh, you know, unless there's some sort of blatant favoritism being shown, uh, it's it's a great activity that you two can do together. Um. So I believe the backgrounds, the the player's handbook backgrounds, are available for free on D and D Beyond. Uh, someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but you can try checking there. The urchin background out of the player's handbook would definitely be a way to go. Um, if you do get your hands on a player's handbook, uh, it's gonna it'll have a lot of step by step character building uh, tips. And in fact, Brodonis, if you want to get uh, if you want to get a feel for someone who has to you know kind of an Aladdin you know a, a, a street rat got a um, you know got a steal to eat got to eat to live um, kind of a thing. You can find videos. In fact, we made one of those characters just the other day on the channel. So there, you could watch it be created live, live in a, in a VOD. You can also check our YouTube on our channel because we do a lot of character creation where we walk you through the steps. Uh, but what I would suggest you do is take a look at the different backgrounds that, that, uh, that are there. And I would highly recommend for, for that concept that she would like to play to go to uh, Urchin and look up what the Urchin offers. Ah, oh, thank you, Fallon. And so, Brodonis, if you have any other questions, you're welcome to ask. And so, hello to you, Brodonis, and to Brodonis's significant other watching. I would also recommend, Brodonis, if you are on Discord, you can join our Discord because we have a mentor network where myself and others will happily answer uh, any of your role-playing questions. You know, uh, how would I build a character like this? Or what does this spell mean? Um, a lot of these things uh, myself and others can answer and help you two to create a character and have a ton of fun playing in this game. No, Brodonis, that's fine. Look, uh, 
everyone gets an opportunity to, and I understand, you know, people people want to play uh, whatever they want to play. In fact, I'll, uh, Brodonis, uh, let me go to my break screen right here. Uh, if you see the dwarf in the center of the screen at the bottom, that lovely lady is named Ellie. And uh, Ellie the dwarf is a widow. Uh, after she lost her husband, she just spent all her time just kind of cooking and sulking for a great long while until uh, she was starting to get, you know, she was getting a little long in the beard. And she said, you know what? I am not going to die alone. I am going to go out and I'm going to adventure and I'm going to live life. I miss my husband terribly, but I am going to go out. I'm going to be this, this lovely silver fox, um, you know, of a, of a dwarf. And I and I'm gonna live before I die. And so she decorates her beard with flowers, and she hits people with uh, with iron skillets because she's she's very comfortable with those as tools. You know, and then again, it, you know, if if that is not your. Uh, if that is not your style of, uh, you know, it, you could think it's hot or not. You know, you could go to the Tumbled Wench, who's the mascot of the tavern. And you can see her in the upper uh, upper right-hand corner. You know, the, the Tumbled Wench is a lady who is, uh, you know, she's well-fed. And, um, you know, she's a little clumsy. She's she, Unfortunately, she tore her skirt. But that also reveals that, you know what, she can take care of herself. Because if you start getting a little uppity, a little rowdy... You know, you, you try and uh, and go for those uh, those uh, you know thick curly, curls in her hair that she has. Uh, sh she'll shank you with her dagger. Um, it was a player character in the Stores uh, Curse of Strahd game that I was running on Thursdays, prior to Tomb of Annihilation. So we're getting a basic city map. We're, we're getting an idea of where things are. You know, we understand. All right. So th this is generally where the city would exist in a municipal, like a, le a legality sense. There probably are some tent cities and stuff along the canals. Because, again, this isn't exactly water people are going to be super fighting over. I mean, you could. It's not necessarily bad. It, it, it's, it's gray water uh, coming from the city. You know, and the closer it gets to the marsh, it, you know, the, the more purified it ended up being you know people probably fish and still do live here they might uh you know they might boil the water or do whatever or at least turn this water into beer uh so that the uh that the bacteria is killed uh by the alcohol uh from the uh from the yeasts um but now that we have an idea for the main the core of the layout as a DM, we could print this out, and sure, we could hand this to our players if we want to. We could make it super detailed also. Mr. Wolfie, uh, th this could be a great opportunity to, you know, to really plan the streets. You know, is this is this one city block? No, this is probably several. And we could go through and, you know, and, and kind of divide it up and, and put streets going every which way and, uh, you know, have things cut across. And, you know, in my own, in my own town here, uh, I'll show you. You know, the, everything was laid out rather square, and that's because we had a uh, mason as a founder. And so not only was everything, you know, pretty uh, pretty laid out, you know, it was accessible to the water, and it was accessible within itself, laterally, as well as to get to the water and to have things flow out, you know, rainwater and such flow out to the lake. However, our, uh, our, our city planner, our mason ended up including the Masonic symbol of the compass and, and the the T not, not the not the T square. Um why am I why am I derping on the name? It's the compass and then it's the it's the right angle. 
Shame on me. I should I should know this better. And so we could include stuff like this if we really wanted to. Now, of course, I mean, little do the people of Sandusky realize that we're uh, we're sealing an ancient evil, uh, you know, underneath Lake Erie. And is it any coincidence that Lake Erie has 50% of all the Great Lakes fish? What is attracting all the fish to Lake Erie? Hmm? Hmm? That's right. I'm on to you. <laughs> Time for a small break from business to enjoy some quality Maddie content and salsa because I have salsa. Oh man, oh sheeps! I was just um, I was just enjoying the last of my ghost pepper salsa. And I, I hope business is going well for you, sheeps. Are you are you working on some commissions? You don't have to say if you don't want to, but I'm, I'm just glad business is going well for you. Hey, Pouty Lips. Uh, I'm excited to announce I'm eating Captain Crunch with berries. Ooh, well then, that is very nautical and is fitting for what we're trying to do. So now that we have this, right, we're getting an idea. It's not just that we have docks, but now we've assigned... All right, the west are for the large ships could be big uh, big people like cruise ships kind of a thing um you know for uh, for colonists or for pilgrims could be big cargo haulers um maybe even a military ship or maybe the military like the military is over here that's also keeping a, a watchful eye on the rowdy docks and over here this is more of um you know, anyone can dock here. It's, it's public. You have a lot of little merchant ships, a lot of little pop-up shops, probably a lot of shady business. Uh, you know, more than a couple people selling milk of the poppy. Maybe Cthulhu's attracting all those fish. Well, Tamric. for some reason, Lake Erie is also the shallowest lake, meaning that compared to the others, th there's something really big at the bottom that is apparently, like underneath a layer of settle of uh, um, sediment that has pushed up the bottom of the lake you got a new commission right at the tail end of may so i'm glad for that i was afraid may was going to be a dry one and it's from a friend oh that's cool oh sheeps and yeah i'll you know i'll have to try and uh, get a commission from you sometime too I, I don't know what i want just yet but um you know i like doing business with those who do business with me Salty Dragon, I'm trying to clean up and prepare for a stream like typical people. I leave it to the last moment. Salty Dragon, I completely understand. And for those of you who are new here, when we do finish up tonight's content, uh, we are going to go raid the Salty Dragon Tavern as we normally do on a Saturday night. I guess it's technically Sunday morning at 2.47 a.m. Uh, however, uh, Dragon has requested that when we raid... Uh, we bring some love and good cheer to one of the players named Chris, uh, who is having a, a, a bit of a health issue right now. And so I want to make sure that we're bringing motivation and good times and good cheer uh, in our raid. So, uh, Salty Dragon, I mean, let me know when, you all, when you're live. Just be like, okay, we're good. And then, you know, dip out to your stream. Uh, that way I know that whenever we finish and we're good to go, we'll come over and make sure we, we bring some positivity to you. Um, because look, this happens in game communities, whether it's a store, um, you know, whether it's a store or otherwise, um, you know, just recently, uh, one of, uh, one of the community members, uh, lost their father to, um, a, a sudden, a sudden disease. Um, it wasn't cancer. I guess so it was nothing, you know, it was nothing along those lines, but it wasn't exactly expected. And so... You know, health emergencies happen. I, I've been subject to a couple myself. Um, you know, let alone, you know, I, I lost my father to uh, brain cancer. Uh, and so I, I hope it's nothing bad. I, I know I'm talking about dire stuff and morbid stuff, and I, I don't mean to bring that down. But, you know, uh, emergencies or health things happen. Um, you know, who'd, who'd know? But would you believe that women get pregnant? Yes, even in a game store, there are women who play games and they're out for a while because they're giving birth or something could happen and they need, uh, you know, they need an emergency C-section or, you know, uh, car accidents happen. Um, and that affects the community. 
You know, you realize that, uh, you know, you come down for Pokemon League every Monday, and over the course of a weekend, there's a drunk driving accident, and suddenly that person will never come to another Pokemon event again. So, you know, I, to, so to spread cheer and good hope, you know, another person in the community ended up getting T-boned by a semi, and we all signed a card, a get well card, when we visited, uh, we visited him in the hospital. Uh, I mean, there's things that we did to, to, to show our support because we don't want bad stuff to happen and we want them to know that we're here, we understand, and we're a family in this together. And, you know, for Salty Dragon, uh, I mean, y'all live, uh, you live across an ocean, you're 14 hours ahead, um, you know, down in Australia. Hey, unfortunately, we don't need a passport to, to visit you through electronic media. But uh, just because there's an ocean separating us doesn't mean that we're all not humans. And uh, more specifically, that we're all not tabletop role players. And there's, there's just not enough of us. And so if one of us is sick or in distress, it's good that we rally together and give them some support. Yes, oh sheeps. They, they get pregante. We are all here for each other. And so speaking of that, as uh, for, you know, medical concerns and the like, um, we can go through it now if we really want to, and we can we can start labeling some things. <laughs> Pregnant? <laughs> How is Babby formed? <laughs> that video, oh my gosh, that... That video just, uh, I mean, not not the Babby formed, because right? that, that's an even older meme. But the, <laughs> but that one, Coffee Cat, that had me absolutely rolling. Uh, so if, if this is a commercial area, we can go through and we can continue to break stuff up if we want. And say, all right, so if this is where the, like a lot of fresh goods are coming through, or people who are leaving to go on a cruise or something, uh, we can say that this area are artisans... Probably not even that far. Um, this area are grocers and artisans. Probably even the one facing here. Now we have uh, we have that kind of the the higher up the muckety muck. So this area here is clearly going to be a Whole Foods. <laughs> I'm sorry, I amused myself too much. Um, you know, then we have uh, then we have this area by the public square and this big fountain. So this is going to be stuff, you know, family stuff, toys, confections, restaurants. You know, you, so you're going to find that all along, all along here, and probably even leading a bit up to it. So now we have this this corridor section on the interior of our commercial area. Kind of not our, not our like you know, uh, Champs Elysees style, you know, our our Fifth Avenue kind of high end, uh, you know, shops that are that are this lavender color. Um, but now when we come through here, this is you know service. It, it's some basic services. It's um you know it could be things like uh, we could have a construction yard. Uh, there there could just be you know, the, the artisans are the ones who use the tools. Um, but, you know, back here are the people who process the vegetables to go to the market stalls. Uh, so you're getting goods and services and just a real mix. Um, and so all throughout here um, is going to be more of... It'd be like a, a walking through an outdoor mall kind of a segment. And then we can just go through and label that. I mean, look how easy it is. Bada boom. We do this. And then we can we can number code them. And then we can make a key. Oh, we can do all sorts of fun stuff here. You know, if this is just residential, okay, so it's just residential and a house is a house. You know, if, if this is an apartment, you know, a bunch of apartments. Um, or let's say that someone in particular lives really close to the plaza. You know, an important NPC. And so we can come through and then we can, boom, right there is so-and-so's house. The other houses, we could just make squiggles and okay, so they're there. 
but they're not going to matter because this is so and so's house. This is the mayor's house. And, you know, we, in fact, we could even probably put uh, that uh, the mayor or the the leader of town probably lives here, uh, s close to the people, um, close to this the plaza, close to the fountain, is still in an upper echelon area, and uh, can also access, you know, the restaurants and everything here. So if we put if we go here suddenly. Because we're building this one step at a time. You may notice when we build characters on this stream, when we build maps, when we build everything, it's one layer at a time. Something exists. Now, what exists around it to help bring it to life? What wakes it up, wakes it up inside? What bids its blood to run before it comes undone? What can help save it from the nothing it has become? You know, just label its name and save it from itself. Coffee Cat, you're going to head off to bed. All right, Coffee, sleep well. How does chat feel about ethical dilemmas? They make for good role-playing opportunities, Bobicus. Oh, Sheep says, I was going to say that may... Oh, I already read that. Okay. Um. Oh, wait, no, I didn't. Uh, May's not a... a a rough time because I was going through that whole my art's not good enough to do a business pity party so the commission came at a good time good you, you get that booster shot you get that nice uh, you, you get that nice um, bit of B12 in you um, it'd be like in a video game where you try to go into a house but it's not important so it's just a locked door yeah yeah kind of like that oh sheeps and you could always make a sidebar like you know inside any townhouse you know or um you know, our uh, 1D4 uh, yuppies and, uh, you know, and 2D4 spoiled children or something like that. Um, you know, in, or depending on where you go, you might you might uncover a wasp nest. W-A-S-P. You got to watch out for the wasps. Their queen is named Karen, by the way. Oh no, Maddie's singing. Yeah, that's right. I'm, I was trying to trick you because I wasn't actually singing, but I was. But I wasn't, but I was. But I wasn't, but I was. For sure, I have a lot of projects that I want to work on, but without the, the steam to do it, they're just a to-do list. Wolo Sheeps, yeah, get let let the vitamin B shot flow through you and energize you. You know, I was I was at the uh, I was at the grocery store earlier, and they of course have the the five dollar like artisan cheese bin. And there was, I didn't see a piece of cheese at $5.01, but it was like for five something. And you just know that there was going to be a Karen that's going to find that and just say, I, I'm literally shaking right now. I, I can't even today. How is there a $5.60 piece of cheese in the $5 cheese bin? This is false advertising. And I feel violated. And I'm going to have to see a manager about this because this is unacceptable. What what kind of business is being run here where there's a piece of cheese that is put in a $5... Five, it says right there. $5 cheese bin. And it costs more than $5. Uh, I've got an ethical dilemma I've been working on, but a lot of people just get angry at the idea of their... By the way, when I'm saying stuff like yuppies and wasps, I, I hope you're understanding that's kind of ironic with my whole actually heartfelt speech of I, I don't like separating people by, like, upper class or anything like that. We can have some fun if it's in context, everyone. Come on now. Um, yeah, can I speak to your manager exactly? So Bobak says, I have an eth ethical dilemma I've been working on, but a lot of people just get angry at the idea of their characters being put in a situation that doesn't necessarily lead to an unmitigated good outcome. Bob, because it sounds like one of Maddie's sessions. It, it, really? You, you think I've uh, I've been putting my characters in a bit of a pinch? I suppose, in a way, I, I'm looking for creativity. But... <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Bobacus. <clears throat> um, so, yes, uh, to get back to here. So, this is where an important NPC lives. And, and when I say important, it doesn't even just have to be the mayor or this is, 
you know, secretly, this is uh, old man Wizard McGillicuddy's townhouse. And he's the one who has information on the phase spiders that are infesting the sewers. You could come over here and say that, um, I mean, you might not want to hand this part out to your players, but you could just go and uh, cordon off an area, right? So we're making a, an irregular piece of American cheese here. And you you go through and label this that this is where this is the district that the attacks are going to begin, and the attacks will begin on like the first day that the the PCs arrive. But they'll they'll probably never ask or find out about it unless there's a weird circumstance. And then after that, we uh, the phase spiders move into phase two because apparently that's how they plan, and and because they're taking people into the cliffs because they're using the the cliff caves and everything. And so then suddenly it becomes the rest of the cliffside here in phase two. And now we're labeling one and two and so forth. That reminds me, a uh, in one of the discords, there was a D&D &D meme. And it was uh, saying, do you know what the, the bard who had twins called her daughters? Anna one, Anna two. Uh, you don't call the flesh tree a pinch, Maddie. Um, y uh, a decision had to be made. You're putting it to me. All right, I'll have to take a look at it in. I'll have to take a look at it in a minute. Then after I finish up the uh, the map that we're making here, I I'm almost done because I think I got the point across in how we can go through and lay out our city and flesh it out. And if you do it by zones, again, I mean, if you have if you have a player or you yourself are colorblind, uh, I will trust you to find a, a workaround in some fashion um, because I believe in you. And I'm not just saying that to be lazy, honestly. Um, you know, some people might have trouble seeing red, or so you might have to do something like red. Of course, I'm using orange on red. What a derp. Residential 3, Residential 2, Residential 1. You know, or again, you can just label it with very, like, black and white um, labels, and then they can refer to they can refer to a key. So don't forget that. If, if you do have uh, people with uh, some sort of color blindness, using, if you can see color, a visual key like this is amazing, and it makes things so simple. Regional map. You get what's happening everywhere with this style. City map, you get what's happening. Now, th does that mean that there can't be a jeweler who exists right here and has a jeweler shop, one of the most famous jewelry shops in all the city? Of course there can be. Generally though, for purposes of navigating around a city, especially when you have an urchin who has a background feature about city navigation and tunnels and sewers, wink, knowing this could be important because if everyone wants to put on a disguise that they look like uh, muckety mucks then they're going to want to generally stick to the streets even if it's longer right if they're here at this temple and they want to get to this temple but they don't want to take the tunnels and they want to they, they want the security of walking through you know a more established neighborhood you know, a place where there might even be private guards to accent the the police that are probably more prevalent in this more affluent area. Then we're gonna play family circus, and we're gonna and your your characters are gonna say, "All right, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna walk this way, and then we're just going to to make a beeline right for the other temple, instead of just going." whoop whoop and taking the hypotenuse which would have been shorter
residential evil, regional evil. For, wait, evil, oh, is this for Bobicus's problem? Um, and of course, too, don't forget to label things like, uh, the hospital. Is the hospital actually here? Is, um, you know, we have, we have temples and such. Is there a shrine to another god? Is there a park? Just a simple little park. Boop, right here. You know, you could put that stuff in there as well. And and it it could be an abstract map like what you're seeing here. We don't we do not have every street labeled. And for the most part that's going to be fine. If your players get the idea and they can think quickly about where some major things are. Where notable features are. About how long does it take to get from this district to this district? You have a functional map. It may not look pretty. It has a lot of colors. This map may not look pretty, but this map will serve as the backbone to your urban caper or your urban adventure. Plus, once you have neighborhoods like this lined out, you can then go and, and sort of reproduce it, but then make the sewer system or the tunnel system. Or if you do this in Photoshop where there are layers, you can, out, you can make a, a, a layer of the city and then you can make other layers to sink down tunnels, but then cover those layers with the cosmetic layers of a uh, city and colors and all that. And so as a DM, let's say that you have this, you have this layered photo on a laptop next to you or something, or if you project it to a screen so that your players can see it, some people do that. They'll put a monitor screen up and they'll, and they'll project, uh, you know, sound effects and uh, maps and all this other stuff uh, through a TV or a monitor. Then through your Photoshop rendering of a city, you can then say, all right, let's peel back the top layer of the city and boom, now we're underground and everything is still to scale. Your neighborhoods are still where they are because all you did was hide them on another layer of the photo. So there we go. I, I, I sincerely hope this was useful to you all and you understand how you can go about even in lowly MS paint that you can still make a bright, vivid map that will convey exactly everything that you want to your players. You can make not just a city map. And of course, you can always come up here and uh, use the medieval fantasy generator, make a medium city and we can change the layout and all this other stuff. Um, and this is perfectly fine because now all you have to do is do the same thing. Go back and label things as you want them to be labeled. Nothing wrong with that. Black Wolf, you're taking off. All righty. Have a good sleep and uh, congratulate that broadcast. I, I mean, for whatever it means. I, I don't know if he does anything with tabletop, but uh, from our community to his... Uh, congratulate him on his success, and I hope that he continues to grow.